There's a saying, it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. And from the outside looking in, you probably haven't seen much. Perhaps you've only heard of the cornfields and corn heads. Those are here, and here to stay. But look closer, and you'll discover where corn meets road is a group of people who make this place called Lincoln awesome. Here, strangers are welcomed as friends, and travelers are treated as locals. A place that when you leave, is somehow unexpectedly on your mind. Like other growing cities, we've got it all. Award-winning local breweries, captivating museums, curated fine art, innovative cuisine, charming shops and boutiques, a rich tradition of sports, and a diverse selection of entertainment. Experience is what matters. And community, well, that's our pride and joy. It's why 297,622 people and county call it home. So when you come to Lincoln and discover everything this big little town in the Midwest has to offer, remember, with every interaction, moment, and experience you have, don't just look, see. Hello and welcome to Out and About. I'm Diane Gonzalez. It's early February and we are out of the deep freeze for now and ready to get out and enjoy some of the great venues and events here in Lincoln. Jeff Mall for Visit Lincoln joins me today. And Jeff, I'd like to start our show a little differently today with a tribute to one of our favorite Lincoln tourism icons, John Chapo, who's retiring after 37 years with the Lincoln Children's Zoo. Elle Magazine did a great cover story covering many of his major accomplishments in those three decades. And I think it's safe to say the zoo is a bigger and better place now than when he started. Yeah, and this was such a, an amazingly appropriate photo of John with one of the great animals that he helped bring to Lincoln as part of the, the yep. new exhibits that he's helped grow. Over 71 million guests have gone through the zoo, and a good majority of those guests come from across the country. Almost every state has stepped foot in the zoo, and at the end, that's economic impact on our economy. So thank you, John, for everything. $313 million economic impact on our city since he started. Yeah. The zoo has tripled in size with three major expansions. We've got the zoo school. There's the photo arc, um, you know, and all of they do all of this with no local, state, or federal funding. It's very much community supported. Great, great board support. Great, a lot of people in this community helping raise money for the zoo. But, you know, we have now not just a few months out of the year zoo. We have a 24-7 zoo that's open year round. Of course, Zoo Lights has really taken off and that's, that's right. really put us on the national map. It's a lot of fun. Now, John officially retired at the end of the year. He's staying on as Professor Emeritus, and he got, or President Emeritus, yeah. and he got to pick his successor, Evan Colleen. Evan's a great guy. Known Evan for several years. Evan's been very much behind the scenes operating the zoo, and now Evan stepped into that role. He's kind of had John with him now for the last few years, grooming him for it, and uh, it's going to be a great opportunity for Evan to, to keep the success alive. Find out more about the Lincoln Children's Zoo, go to lincolnzoo.com, and I think the best way to honor John would be to become a member. Yes, yes, zoo membership is extremely affordable, and everything that you get out of a 12-month membership is, is something that uh, it just will pay off dividends down the road. Kids love it, adult approved. Thank you, John Chapo. Thanks, John. We should, we should have that sparkling grape juice to toast him. Right, probably could have a cookie with it, too. <laughs> yes, as you notice, we're in a little different spot today. Uh, we got kicked out of our studio, so we are in another um, secret place here at City Hall. But there are cookies waiting for us from, what is it called? Insomnia cookies. Insomnia cookies, which yeah. is fairly new to Lincoln. So we were evicted, but we're here now, and we got cookies as a reward. It's all good. We'll keep this show going. All right, let's talk about some more fun stuff for kids, starting with Legos. And, it's, of course, that's not just for kids. No. Tim Matthews at the Museum of American Speed actually runs the museum portion of what they do out there. And Lego, the Lego Pit Stop competition will be hosted at the Museum of American Speed. You'll get a chance to put together your very own Lego kit car. 
uh, much like a Pinewood Derby car and mm -hmm. get a chance to explore Legos. Legos have been around for years and uh, it's neat to see the Museum of American Speed bringing everybody together to celebrate. I feel really cheated. I didn't get to grow up with Legos. What'd you grow up with? Wooden blocks? Plain old blocks. Right. Yeah. Pretty boring. Yeah. Did you well, have letters on the blocks? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. With pictures yeah, and yeah. yeah, the whole thing. All right. Also, find out more about what's available for early childhood here in Lincoln, Nebraska at the Early Childhood Family Fair. The string beans are going to be there, and the string beans are celebrating their 20th anniversary in April. Yeah, while kids play games, make art and dance, caregivers can connect with local Lincoln organizations and businesses that support and serve populations for children from ages zero through eight. And this is free. Yes, free event. Get out there. Let's also support our high school athletes, starting with the state swimming and diving championships. If you've got a young swimmer in your family, get out there and show them Show them how it works. State High School Championships, uh, Dan. We're going to talk a lot about that in February and March, but things really get going with the Swimming and Diving Championships. At the Devaney Center Pool, I encourage people to buy tickets ahead of time because seating is very much limited. And that's where the Huskers swim. You bet it dive. is. All right. Girls and boys basketball. Two huge weekends coming up, um, late February, early March. Uh, first of all, we've got the girls uh, basketball tournament February 28th through March 2nd. Yeah, and we've got the new format, which we've had for the last several years. Starts on Wednesday, runs through Saturday. We will utilize the Devaney Center, Pinnacle Bank Arena, and Lincoln East High School for the Girls' State Championships. And then the boys are in town the very next weekend. And again, Pinnacle Bank Arena, Devaney Center, and this time Lincoln Northwest. Yeah, great opportunity to show off one of our newest high schools in Lincoln. The uh, Northwest High School uh, will be at a, a place for third place games. Again, Two great weekends. Tickets are always plentiful for state high school championships. So even if you don't have a son or a daughter or a neighbor or a relation playing at state high school basketball, go be a fan. Cheer them on and experience high school sports. And the weather's going to be perfect. Knock on whatever this We're is. We're setting at today. 58. Yeah, go, let's, go, let's, go, let's go sunny in 65 for All both right. tournaments. Both weekends. All right. You heard it here first. Okay. Let's also support our student artists as well. They do wonderful things at the Arts and Humanities High School, and they're going to have a show at the Lux. Yeah. Joe Shaw's entire staff at the Lux Center for the Arts do amazing things and great opportunity to have a program and show benefiting the LPS Arts and Humanities focus. Yeah. Have you ever been to that school? It's really cool. I have not. Yeah. We are, we are lucky to have such great focus schools like this and Zeus School yep. and the yep. Career, Career Academy. Academy. So yeah, very lucky. Yeah, good. Okay. Also, Hub High. Hub High. We got to talk about that sometime. We should. We should <laughs> if your that. family is into space, you'll want to check out an art exhibition at in Nebraska Innovation Campus. This is uh, our photographs captured by Brad Severa. Mm -hmm. he, um, he started taking the night sky and clear. Northeast Nebraska when he was a kid, and now uh, now he's got a whole exhibit. Yeah, the Dark Sky Initiative is very much alive and well in the state of Nebraska. Most of the images were processed at the Nebraska Innovation Studio using the latest stacking software as well as printed, matted, and framed use using tools available at the Makerspace. Makerspace, Nebraska Innovation Campus, is amazing. This would be a good opportunity to find out more. Yes. So go go check out uh, check out Brad's photographs. Let's get into some cool stuff, and by cool, I mean like really cold. <laughs> yeah, right? Have you done the polar plunge, by no. the way? Weren't you part of the mayor's staff that all went in the water and I came out? I just watched. <laughs> I've done it once. The Special Olympics polar plunge will take to the, the shores of Holmes Lake Park coming up. It's a huge fundraiser for Special Olympics Nebraska. They encourage you to put together a team, come out in costume, have a theme to your team, raise a lot of great money for Special Olympics Nebraska. This is one of their biggest fundraisers. And having done it, the anxiety about going in isn't as bad as when you come out body wet in whatever the cold air, if there's a breeze even at one miles per hour, it hits you. If it's like today, there won't be a problem. Yeah. But, but what we want people to do is grin and bear it, go do it, and think about every special Olympian that you're benefiting across the state of Nebraska. A five-minute dip in the pool, not a problem. Five minutes? You don't have to stay in that long. <laughs> 30 seconds. I think uh, hypothermia <laughs> might set in at that point. Also, if, if ice skating is your thing, the rail yard rice, ice rink is back in operation. I'm not sure they are today with the high temps. So you have to, it's weather permitting. So we're hoping next time people get a chance to head down there, it's cold enough. Either bring your own skates, they have skate rental available, and of course, some great hot beverages as well. That's right. This is uh, sponsored by the Lincoln Stars this year. And you can go see the stars in person, of course, at the Ice Box. They've got several matches coming up. Yeah, and why haven't you been to the Ice Box? I don't know. It's a great place it's to really be. It's really fun. 
Uh, they take on the Sioux City Musketeers this month, the Dubuque Fighting Saints, the Tri-City Storm, and the Chicago Steel. Keep an eye at the Lincoln Stars website for in-game promotions and get a lot of good people together and go out and uh, celebrate hockey and cheer on the Stars. All right. I've had enough of the cold stuff. Okay. Let's warm up. Take it inside. Nebraska Brass has the perfect event for us to warm up. Yeah, the 36th anniversary season is upon us, Diane. The Nebraska Brass will perform a concert titled Winter Heat, Hot Music for Cold Weather. Yeah, that's, that sounds pretty fun. That is March 3rd at Southgate United Methodist. And then the Nebraska Jazz also has a hot vocalist. <laughs> there's a theme going on here. Uh, there's a theme. Concert Jazz Classics will feature vocalist Jackie Allen. Jackie's extraordinary talent has taken her on tours of Europe, Africa, South America, Asia, and she's had a chance to be a part of a lot of great things in Lincoln, and it was a recipient of the Mayor's Arts Award. That's right, and she did perform at the Arts Award that year. She also was on a Prairie Home Companion, and I believe she tried to teach okay. Garrison Keeler how to scat. How'd that go? Scat singing. Yeah. Um, I don't think he was very good. <laughs> I think it's a special <laughs> well, talent. We'll have to ask yeah, Jackie, yeah. but uh, check out the Nebraska Jazz Orchestra concert coming up March 7th. The Star City Chorus is then having two shows coming up. The first one is featuring the Lincoln Choral Artists. Yeah, come out for a song-filled evening at the Star City Chorus collaboration with the Lincoln Choral Artists for a joint concert. For more information, visit Star City Chorus on Facebook. Sounds like a great compilation at the Christ United Methodist Church. And then the Star City Chorus is doing its season finale with a, with a show called Thank You for Being a Friend. You can sing along with all your favorite TV theme songs. TV theme songs. There's a lot of good ones back in the day. Oh, gosh, yes. We could spend hours talking about theme songs. As long as we don't sing anymore. No, we tried that last up. I did, maybe. Yeah, I got brave this time and tried it, but that, that's it. All right. Lincoln Symphony has three events coming up, starting with... Star Wars, back by popular demand. Yeah, this time around they're going to have the music from The Mandalorian, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and of course all three trilog trilogies of John Williams' Star Wars classic. Of course, come as a character. Dress up as your oh, favorite yes. Star Wars character. And uh, there'll be a special photo booth before the concert and during admission for the kids to get a picture taken featuring Star Wars themes. I hope there's a Chewbacca. Oh, no. I hope somebody comes as Chewbacca. I hope so too. That would be a little warm, but maybe if it's cold. I think it'd be awesome. All right. LSO is expanding its season with a chamber orchestra concert, and this one on Sunday, February 18th, is going to feature one of my favorites, Copeland's Appalachian Spring. Yeah, great opportunity to get into the Johnny Carson Theater, a little bit more intimate surrounding there as part of the Lead Center Complex, and uh, lots of great things there going on with the LSO coming up soon. Okay. LSO is also presenting Bella Fleck in concert on March 9th. He is probably the most famous banjo player of our time. He's a 15-time Grammy Award winner, and he's doing a couple Gershwin tunes that I love, An American in Paris and Rhapsody in Blue. Yeah, and to close out that program, LSO celebrates the 100th anniversary with a composition of the Raps Rhapsody in Blue and uh, pulling in Bella Fleck's trans uh, transcription for a solo banjo and orchestra concert. Great compilation here going out the lead. Yes, he's an amazing artist. So LSO is going to have a busy spring. Late winter, early spring. Who played the banjo in Hee Haw? Hmm. Um, Roy. Uh, Roy. All right. That's something for you all to think about. But I was just thinking about that, banjo players. Yeah. I, have to I look love up Bella Fleck. You cannot be sad when you're listening to banjo. I love it's, it. It's a rule. Uh, we've got some new, four new theater shows coming up, starting at the Nebraska Repertory Theater with The Flick. And this is a Pulitzer Prize winning play by Annie Baker. Yeah, and again, it's a great opportunity to talk about and, and discover the lives of three underpaid employees working at a rundown movie theater in Massachusetts. Through their quiet moments, awkward interactions, and profound silences, Baker's masterful storytelling exposes the complexities of human relationships. All right, coming up March 15th through the 24th, then Quasimodo takes over Hickman. Yeah, The Hunchback of Notre Dame showcases the film's Academy Award-winning or nominated score, as well as new songs by Mencken and Schwartz. And a great opportunity to enjoy this production at the Nebraska Community's Playhouse. I was down there last month. They have come a long way with that theater down there. Oh, the theater is wonderful. It's amazing. Yes. Great opportunities to mingle, wide open spaces, and plenty of seating. This is Hugo's Gothic novel set in 15th century Paris, of course, featuring the Bells of Notre Dame, which is undergoing a fascinating renovation. I, I was, saw a story I was about looking it. Looking at that day. as well, yeah. So, yes. 
join Quasimodo, Esmeralda, and a sweeping score at the Nebraska Communities Playhouse. Then the Lincoln Community Playhouse. I know I have a lot of favorites, but Cabaret you has do. a special place in my heart. Cabaret is the story, of course, of a Berlin nightclub set in the 1920s. And as the 20s grow to a close, a gar garish master of ceremonies welcomes the audience and assures them that they will forget all of their troubles at the cabaret. And of course, things just kind of go from there. Right. There are a lot of troubles at this time as, as Berlin natives and expatriates, uh, Germany slowly yielding to the emerging Third Reich. So it's, uh, it's a very interesting story, great music. And uh, whoever plays Sally Bowles has always got to be fabulous. So one of your favorites. It is. I love, I love Cabaret. How many favorites do you have? A, a lot. bunch. Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> Depends on the category. Right. I love it. <laughs> uh, Nebraska Wesleyan is presenting The Good Doctor, and this is Neil Simon. Yeah, if laughter is the best medicine, Neil Simon prescribes us a powerful dose of Chekhov. This play's writer-narrator deals with his writer's block by hopping from story to story in his colorful medicine cabinet. All right. Uh, we want to remind you of three plays that we talked about last time. The first two feature Women in War. The Hello Girls is at Nebraska Wesleyan. This features fearless telephone operators in World War I. Then I Carry Your Heart With Me. This is uh, a new play by Jennifer Blackmer revolving around a government stenographer who is working for the U.S. Air Force during the Vietnam War. She finds herself in the middle of a troubling investigation. And at Tada, the Little Sisters of Hoboken return in a sequel to Nonsense called Nonsense 2. And this is, uh, features the sisters doing a thank you performance on the high school set of South Pacific. Oh. Ooh, so those are three fun shows. You want to you make sure the you The twist on that is they didn't know there was a talent scout in the audience. So yeah. Yeah, it gets a little interesting. It does. No more habit jokes. Okay. <laughs> Jeff and I like to talk about food. Fun stuff, right? and so we're just going to go for it. We're going to talk about some of the great things coming up at Lincoln Restaurants and Bars, starting with one of my granddaughter's favorites, and that is Screamers. Screamers has an old-school R&B dinner show weekend coming up, and yes. this sounds like a great thing. Bring your best sweetie or your best group of friends and sing along to your favorite R&B love songs and more. Includes a gourmet meal, and the concept of Screamers those that wait your tables and help you order and bring your cocktails to you and your food also perform. It's a great setting. Kevin Witcher has done an outstanding oh. job of bringing back the Scarlet and Cream singers yes. in a way that is very special. There's fun costumes there, the food's good, and your waiter gets up and sings. That's, that's wonderful. I love it. All right, fans of Barry Manilow then will want to be at Screamers February 29th. Uh, they're going to do a Forever Fanalo show. Yeah, a lot of fun. You'll get a lot of great songs like Mandy, Can't Smile Without You, and much, much more. Actually, I see that uh, Barry Manilow is actually going on his last tour this year. So maybe he'll show up. That would be something. We don't want to promise anything. But no. it seems very appropriate that this might be his last year touring. They're going to do a Forever Fanalo production at Screamers. I bet he'd get a free meal. <laughs> <laughs> We love food. Yes. <laughs> we do love food. Uh, there'll be mostly beer at the Disc Golf mm -hmm. Watch Party. This is called the 2024 Chess.com Invitational, but it's not chess. That's just the sponsor. It's actually Disc Golf, which, of course, is played with what we called Frisbees. Right. Some call it Frolf, yes. but it's Frisbee Golf. We, disc have, golf. we have some great courses here in Lincoln. Yeah. This competition is actually in Brooksville, Florida on the Disc Golf Network. Great opportunity to get out to the Zipline Beer Hall and watch and take in and partake and drink and eat and have a good time. Yes, it's, it's always fun. I'm terrible at throwing the disc. I usually hit other people instead of the target. You throw the hook, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not very good at it. But I included this next event, Bockfest, because I learned how to pronounce Beerhouse Maschuler. That a girl. Yoo-hoo. Glad you did it. <laughs> so Bockfest is like Oktoberfest, only in the winter. German sausage, pretzels, beer, great polka. opportunity to enjoy polka, beverages, food, everything. Great location down on 8th Street. If you remember, Scooter's Coffee used to be on the corner at uh, 8th and P. That's right. And so this is right on that corner there, and they're doing great things over there. People love their German heritage right here in the Midwest. Beer House Maschuler. I got it. Okay. And now for two things that are completely different. These are both super fun. I couldn't decide which one, so we're doing both. 
This is a flyer I picked up, actually a table tent that mm -hmm. was at the zoo bar. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do go to the zoo bar. And it, it's all about the bar stool open. And so I was glad to see that you included it in your list yes, too. Of course. This is indoor, outdoor miniature golf raising f funds for United Cerebral Palsy of Nebraska. Yeah, this has actually been around for a while. Teams of four move from participating bars and venues in the downtown area, competing for bragging rights on par three holes created by each business. So there's a lot of creativity that goes into it, a lot of great opportunities to uh, come out in costume. They highly encourage costumes, but at the end of the day, you're having fun with friends, but you're also raising money for a, a great organization, the United Cerebral Palsy of Nebraska. Are you good at miniature golf? Yeah. Really? My long game's horrible. That's why I don't play golf, but the short game, yeah. putting, great. Yeah, I'm inconsistent. We should put together an ONA team, an out and about team. We'll get the guys and gals in the studio and let's just do it. Let's do it. I bet, that Bo, like I bet Bo and I bet the whole team's good at golf. Oh, probably. Right? Yeah. Okay. We'll probably challenge. Austin. Look at Austin. He Austin's like pacing golf. right now because he's thinking about entering <laughs> and he doesn't know what to call the team. Okay. Also, our second, something completely different. If you see people, adults, <laughs> running around downtown in onesies on February 24th, do not panic. Yeah. This is the Kix 96.691 Z Bar Crawl 2024. Yeah, Kix 96.9. I think we got an extra digit in there. Oh. But check in from 2 to 4 p.m. at Longwell's in the rail yard and receive your official onesie crawl lanyard. Good for exclusive drink specials at participating bars. A portion of the proceeds goes to the Lincoln Firefighters Operation Warm IAFF partner program that connects kids in need with brand new winter coats. Very timely event. KZKX.com. And of course... We do want to recommend and encourage people to drink responsibly, Absolutely. have fun responsibly, but these are two great fundraisers in our community. That's right. Uh, drink responsibly, get a designated driver, because if you get caught um, intoxicated wearing a onesie, you're probably in a lot of trouble. <laughs> There's a lot of questions that are going to go into more That's than, right. what have you been doing tonight That's right. in that onesie, right? Yeah, it's a dead giveaway. Yes. All right. Tell us where we can find out more about all the fun things and more food. <laughs> yeah, we obviously have been talking a lot about the Haymarket in downtown. Stop at our visitor center at 7th and P. Give us a call at 434-5348 or as always, log on at lincoln.org. So much more than what we talk about going on in Lincoln each and every week. That includes all the great shows at two great downtown venues, the Lead Center and Rococo. So as we go to break, Jeff, we're going to talk about, we're going to show a list of some of the all the events going up at those two venues. And then Tim Savone is going to be here. Busy man, that man. I, oh, he's... Concert he announcements galore. Six new announcements like in the last week. So yeah, Tim he'll will join come. us from Pinnacle Bank Arena, Pinewood Bowl. He'll be running in here soon. Okay, thank you so much, Jeff. And we will be right back with Out and About. Back to Out and About. Tim Savona joins us now from Pinnacle Bank Arena and Pinewood Bowl. And you have been busy. Six new shows announced in the last week. It's been a busy week. It has. A really busy week. The team is doing a phenomenal job. Awesome oh. people. Great work. It's been a busy week. It's been a busy week. Yeah. So we're going to get to some of the already announced shows. We're going to get to the new yeah. shows. We'll talk a little basketball. But we're going to start with uh, everyone's favorite Valentine's Day. Um, let's take him to Pantera. Pantera. What else are you going to do on Valentine's Day? You, you go, go to dinner, you have a glass of wine, and you go see Pantera. Yeah. Yeah. Great show. Heavy metal. Haven't had the genre in the building in a while. Uh, should be fun. You know, anytime you can have an event around something is, is, is unique and fun. You know, because there's lots of uh, audience for everything out there. So That's right. It'll be a great show. We look forward to it. They're a great band. And then the first two weekends in March, then we've got the state basketball tournaments. Jeff and I talked about the excitement that creates in Lincoln. You were really new last I, year. I was. I was like two weeks in when they started last year with state tournaments. And, uh, you know, just this week we had a meeting with the state tournament folks. And great, great partnership there, great relationship. And uh, 
it's just hard to believe that it's like here again. You know? It's here again. It sneaks up on you, and it's an exciting few days. It's one of those events that, you know, it's why you do this. You know, you get these high school kids that look forward all year long to hopefully making the tournament and being able to play at Pinnacle Bank Arena and then maybe winning a championship and having that lifelong memory. You know, I mean, you talk to anybody today, no matter how old they are, if they mm -hmm. played in the state tournament or in a state championship, they remember it. And, yep. and we get to be a part of, you know, delivering that, that special memory. And, and at cool. the end, you know, you have to keep replacing the nets that are cut down. Yeah, you know, we have to, that's a busy Saturday. You know, a lot of nets. <laughs> All right, March 16th, then the weekend after the tournaments are over, Avenged Sevenfold will be at the arena. Yeah, kind of an alt-rock um, rock band. A lot of fun. Saturday night in March, it's an awesome date, way to get out. You know, the weather's not quite nice enough maybe to go golfing, um, but... Great show. We look forward to having them, and uh, you know, we, we invite everybody to turn out for it. All right. Then, a big new announcement that just came down today, which is we're taping on February 1st. Mm -hmm. Happy February. Uh, Lil Wayne is coming. Yeah, Lil Wayne, hip-hop act. He usually plays with a band. A lot of hip-hop acts play to a track. He usually plays with a band, so we'll see if that, uh, you know, if he continues that streak, but a great show. You know, it's, we, we, he had them years ago, and it was a, a phenomenal night. Kind of like uh, Snoop in the sense it appeals to a large range of audiences. You know, Lil Wayne's just one of those original hip hop artists that everybody kind of knows and remembers from their, you know, 90s, 2000s kind of decades. So That's right. He was last here in 2016. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Then on April 13th, we've got professional bull riding coming to the arena. Yeah, you know what? You know what this event list doesn't show is some of the private functions and. In April, we have the annual FF&A conference, yes. which is like the first few days into April. All the blue jackets. Yep. Green, they, yeah, blue, blue denim jackets, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we go right into like the FCCLA conference. And then right after that, we have that Little Wayne show. And then the wow. next night, we're going to be hosting uh, the, the Liba dinner, which I'm not even sure if that's public yet. So if it, you know, sorry, sorry Liba, but. <laughs> um, and then right after that, PBR. So you're looking at 14 straight days of content basically at the arena of all, you know, of all different types of events. So very exciting. PBR to have them in April. Uh, great date. Historically, they've been in like October or the fall time frame. Mm -hmm. They weren't here at all in 2023. And now we have them back in the spring of 24. Uh, hopefully this will be a, a time frame that continues for, for the long haul uh, in March or April. But awesome show. PBR bull riding. They have Netflix specials, all kinds of good stuff. So. And are you going to have Pabst Blue Ribbon? Yeah, I assume so. Yeah. PBR for PBR? Yeah. Okay, yeah. just checking. All right, comedian and ventriloquist extraordinaire Jeff Dunham will be here April 27th. Yeah, I mean, what more is there to say? Jeff Dunham, awesome, awesome comedian, uh, super funny, been around a little bit. Um, the spring game for the Huskers is that same day, but they're a great partner, and they're playing that game really early, and uh, so there'll be a no overlap. So don't be deterred. Come on out to both or come to Jeff Dunham either way. Um, but no overlap there, a lot of fun, exciting Saturday in Lincoln. Okay. Then April 29th, just two days later, Greta Van Fleet is here. Is here. Have they been here before? They have not. They played Omaha a couple of years ago, so we're really excited to have them here in Lincoln for our turn. Um, they're like a Zeppelin-esque, you know, mainstream popularity band. Uh, really good, really cool sound, and uh, we're still in April. I mean, That's holy right. cow, what an April, and what a way to end it with Greta Van Fleet. It'll be a fun night. Let's move into May. We have two shows announced for the arena in May. Of course, we're going to talk about Pine Bowl, Pinewood Bowl here in a little mm -hmm. bit. But May 5th, Stained will be here. Yeah, we start out with Stained, you know, head, headed up by Aaron Lewis. Um, he crosses multiple genres in, in his music. But in this regard, Stained, you know, being an alt rock, rock, and rock band, um, just awesome package um, on that show. And a good way to spend Cinco de Mayo rocking out. There you go. And then Lauren Daigle on May 10th. Lauren, I'm really excited for this show, Lauren Daigle. She's got, like, it's like Christian-based kind of content, but it crosses over into pop. Uh, she's very poppy, very popular, and huge, tremendous charity efforts from her. If every show she does in every community, and uh, we have a really something exciting planned for that behind the scenes that'll be coming out soon that we're, we're really excited to share with the community. Okay, we'll look forward to that. Yeah. Let's talk about four big new shows that have recently been announced. In August, Hozier is coming. This is... Uh, he last played Pinewood Bowl in 2015. Yeah, Hozier is blowing up right now. I mean, he was big before. They had a great reputation before, but this whole tour is really big. They added a lot of new dates. Um, the sales are really strong. Lots of people out to see him. He's headlining a lot of uh, festivals, um, but kind of an alternative indie sound, really good music, 
and uh, you know, don't miss this. This is like this is one of the stories of the year is Hosier. And then four days later, Heart with Cheap Trick will be here, formed by singer sisters Anne and Nancy yep. Wilson, and they had so many hits. So many hits. They're a, Heart's a guilty pleasure of mine. That's the kind of sh the music I turn on at night after you know I've winded down for the day a little bit, and they're just phenomenal. Um, classic rock, timeless. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, their their career spans decades: seventies, eighties, nineties, the two thousand tens. Here we are in twenty twenty four. They're as big as ever. Um, that's going to be a, you know, and they're with Cheap Trick, which is a phenomenal package. And they have inspired many other female musicians. Yes, they were, well, they were so. definitely a, a trendsetter. Okay. Trailblazer. August 24th, Rob Zombie and Alice Cooper Freaks on Parade Tour. Awesome show. This is <laughs> going to be, that. this is yeah. going to be an epic night of rock. Um, it's a Saturday night in August. It's big. You know, e these are both headlining artists and, and they're both together. And, and the support acts too. I think uh, Mystic and um, I forget the other one. It's slipped in my mind, but it's like a four band package of rock and it's going to be an awesome night. If you've never seen Rob Zombie, it's an awesome show. And Alice Cooper puts on one of the most unique shows you'll ever see and remember. It's awesome. Well, he's been around a long time. Yeah, too. But, but they're as good as ever. One of the biggest announcements from PBA is that Pink is coming back. She last uh, did a sold out show in, uh, at the arena in 2018. Yeah, Pink's, Pink's an exciting story. We're, we're very excited to have this show, uh, something that we've been working on for a really long time. Um, you know, she does a lot of acrobatics out there. She's, she's a pop artist. Um, I mean, I don't know what more you can say about Pink. She's a legend. She puts on a one of a kind show and uh, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Tickets are going fast. So I bet. Don't wait. Okay. Summer is headed our way, and let's go out to Pinewood Bowl. And we've got the Pinewood Bowl season so far, starting with Cake on May 13th. Yeah, Cake, alt-rock, 90s band, very popular. I mean, candidly, I was quite surprised with how strong this show went on sale. I mean, it's, it's going to be pretty much a full house. That Great. thing has been really well-received, really exciting way to kick off the season out there. A new announcement for Pinewood Bowl then is that Willie Nelson and family, they are coming May 15th. Willie is 90 years old and he's had a seven decade career, mm -hmm. still going. Special kind of talent. I mean, that's a long time to be entertaining and he still puts on a great show. His fans love to come out and see him. I, I just, we're very grateful to have this show, to have Willie back. He's been a, a mainstay to Pinewood Bowl over the years. And we're always on the radar with them. And, uh, you know, it's because of the support of the community and his fans. And, uh, man, we look forward to this night in May. Well, that's going to be a beautiful venue for oh, Willie. Great, great. Oh, yeah. May 18th, then, Need to Breathe is coming. Yeah, Need to Breathe was here a few years back. It's been a few years, probably like five years now. You know, sometimes a few turns into like five or six. But um, great show. This was our first Pinewood announcement of the season. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, looking forward to having them back. They do a, a great job. It's kind of Christian crossing over into pop, um, but it's like loud rock and roll type music. Um, but not, it's just, it's fun. Okay. Banging. The last announced show that we have, and I'm sure there are many, many announcements to come. Uh, July 24th, Jason Mraz will be here with his super band. Jason Mraz and the super band. Yeah. Jason Mraz is an awesome songwriter. He's, he's been around a, a, a few years, 10 years or so. Just a, a great artist, great talent. Um, really a perfect show, I think, for Pinewood, you know, just in the, under the lights in that environment there. It would be, be a very intimate environment for Jason. Okay. Well, it's hard to believe, but um, conference play underway at PBA uh, and basketball season in terms of college is kind of winding mm -hmm. down to March Madness. Here we are in February already. I know. It's Men crazy. are 15 and 6 mm -hmm. uh, as of February 1st, playing Wisconsin tonight. The women, 14 and 7. They just beat Purdue last night. Yeah. Exciting so, uh, yeah, still going strong. Yeah, and the, the men, yeah, I think it's about five games for each of them left, four or five. Uh, the men's last home game is March 3rd. And the women's last home game is February 24th. Uh, coming up in a couple weeks, or next weekend, I guess, February 10th and 11th, the men play Michigan, and that game is sold out. And on the 11th, the women play Iowa, and that game is sold out. So we're going to have back-to-back men and women's basketball games sold out. I mean, that's, I don't know if that's been done before. It's exciting. Yes. yes it's very it special. Is. All right. And it is announcement season. So definitely stay tuned and keep an eye on our social channels and subscribe to our, our fan club. It's free to get you know, all the latest mm -hmm. announcements, but 
there's going to be a lot of Pinewood stuff rolling out soon and some other stuff there sprinkled in. So. All right. Thank we'll you so to. much, Tim. Pinnacle Bank, arena.com and pinewoodbowltheater.com are the websites to check out. And again, become a, become a friend, a fan. Fan. Yeah. yeah. And you'll find get all the, all the announcements as they happen. That's right. So. Go to the website, fill it out. You get emails. Okay. Sounds it's free. Good. Doesn't Thanks. cost anything. All right. We like free. <laughs> yeah. Shows aren't free. Oh, you know, Being a fan is. Everybody's got to eat. <laughs> thank you so much, Tim. That is all for this edition of Out and About. I want to thank the guests I had for today. And after the show, we'll be running a list of all the events we talked about today. Until next month, thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you out and about.
There's a saying, it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. And from the outside looking in, you probably haven't seen much. Perhaps you've only heard of the cornfields and corn heads. Those are here, and here to stay. But look closer, and you'll discover where corn meets road is a group of people who make this place called Lincoln awesome. Here, strangers are welcomed as friends, and travelers are treated as locals. A place that when you leave, is somehow unexpectedly on your mind. Like other growing cities, we've got it all. Award-winning local breweries, captivating museums, curated fine art, innovative cuisine, charming shops and boutiques, a rich tradition of sports, and a diverse selection of entertainment. Experience is what matters. And community, well, that's our pride and joy. It's why 297,622 people and county call it home. So when you come to Lincoln and discover everything this big little town in the Midwest has to offer, remember, with every interaction, moment, and experience you have, don't just look, see.